Oh, okay, it's Monday. We're starting third week, so we'll start our third unit uh, today. Um, and this is a fun unit because we get into the if-then statement um, and being able to make choices in our programs uh, here. Um, so far, we've just seen how to do variables uh, and uh, print out display stuff to the user and then get some input for the user. And there are some basic things we can do with that. But one of the things we uh, generally want to do is gen, um, have the program do different things depending on what the user says or selects or you know inputs uh, here. Uh, and right now we can't do this. The, our programs always do the exact same thing. It starts at the first statement and goes through and does all the statements in order uh, here. So we're going to look at the if-then statement, which will let us kind of do um, have some choices in our programming uh, here. So I'm just going to go to unit three uh, and go to the learning material. And we're just going to kind of jump into the textbook and look at some of these uh, things. Um, so first thing I want, I'm going to jump into CS Awesome first. Um, one of the things we need to do is uh, then be able to test for things, ask it uh, things that are going to be either true or false. And these are called Boolean expressions or Boolean variables uh, here. And the two we use a lot are to test if two things are equal. And we use the equal equal for that. And in a test if two things are not equal, and we use an explanation point and an equal uh, there. When I grew up, this was an explanation point was always called a bang. I don't know why it was just called, so we just called it a bang equals uh, there. But it's just the explanation point and then an equals uh, sign uh, for not equals uh, for this. Um, so. Now, this is different than the single equal, which is our assignment statement. So if you look at this example, we're setting int age equal to 15, int year equal to 14. So this is a single equals that assigns the age variable to the value of 15 or, or copies 14 into the year variable. Uh, but then we can ask things like, uh, we can do print out, does age equal or is equivalent to the year? Are they the same? This this will be either true or false for that. And again, we can also ask if they're not true. So those are two we use a lot. Um, we'll also use the greater than and less than signs. So there's just less than, greater than, greater than or equals, less than or equal, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and then again, equals and not equal. So these are basically the ones we have here. One thing to note is that like the less than or equals, it always has to be the less than sign and then an equals. You can't mix those up. You can't say an equal sign and then a less than sign. It always has to be the less than and then the equals or the greater than and then equals for this. Now, certainly these probably make sense with numbers. You know, you can ask is, you know, seven less than 12, uh, that makes sense to you. Uh, we'll talk more about what does it make when we when we compare two strings. Uh, so is, you know, is the word this less than the word that? Uh, and what does it mean for one word to be less than the other? And then we'll see that it will do a, comparison, what we call lexicographical comparison, just uh, which one comes earlier in the alphabet. So A will be less than B, uh, and Apple will be less than baseball uh, for that because uh, they, of their place in, in the alphabet. Okay, I'm not going to go too much into Boolean expressions. Uh, there's more things, but we really want to get into if-then statements uh, here. And again, if you've had CS principles, You've seen this sort of block statement where you say if, and then some uh, expression that is you know a greater than or equal to, and then a then, and we do something uh, for this. Um, and this is what we all write it out on Java code. We'll write if things like x is greater than zero, then we'll print something else. We'll or, you know we'll do something here. 
Um, kind of the idea here is that we test for some condition. If that condition is true, we go do the statement. If that condition is false, we skip over the statement uh, for this. Um, so again, we say if, and then inside parentheses, we do a Boolean expression. So something that like we just looked at that we have a greater than or an, an equivalent sign or not equals and equals. And then we'd have some expression here. Now you can do this without a brace, but we'll almost always require you to have a brace like this. So we'll say if parentheses, Boolean expression parentheses, and then we'll start with a brace and we'll do our statements and then end with a brace. One thing that gets confusing to people is you kind of get used to putting a semicolon at the end of each statement, at the end of each line almost. But really you put a semicolon at the end of each statement. And so um, we don't put uh, a semicolon at the end of the if statement because it keeps going uh, here and ends kind of there. So don't put a semicolon after the if. Uh, it will just it will it does what we call short circuits the if uh, there because the semicolon seems like a single statement uh, there and it will just do that empty statement rather than what you think it should do later on. Ah, uh, so here's an example um, with a boolean variable. Uh, we say boolean is raining equals true, and we say if is raining. Uh, then we print out take an umbrella uh, here. So this is kind of our thing. Often we won't just have a, a Boolean variable here. We'll have a Boolean expression uh, for this uh, stuff. So we'll say something like here we ask, we, we, we pick a random number. We haven't talked about random numbers, but there's a way of generating random numbers. So here we set number equal to a random number uh, here. And then we ask, if that number is greater than zero, and then we print out the number is positive. And then we, uh, we also ask if the number is zero and we print off that number is zero. And we can also ask, what do we do if it's negative? We can add another statement here. So again, this the structure of this, we wanna check if that number is negative is less than zero. We always say if parentheses, and then whatever our expression is, so like we might wanna be number is less than zero end parentheses, and we'll start our brace uh, and we'll do something like here, maybe we'll just say system.out.println. Uh, the uh, number is negative. Now we started a brace here. So now we have to start watching our brace uh, here. So we started a brace. Now there is an end brace here, but that's supposed to match up with this uh, and this start brace here and here, uh, here. So we actually need to have another brace here so that, it, and sometimes we put little comments here. So this is the end of the if statement. Here's the, this one, we click on that one, we'll match up with this one, the main. So this is the end of the main. And then this brace here matches up with this, our class. So we might say, this is our end of the class. So again, uh, we'll be adding a lot more braces in here. And it gets kind of confusing when you're adding more braces. You have braces within braces that make sure they all line line up. So again, sometimes people like, you know, find it useful to put some comments here so we can keep track of which brace is matching up here. Uh, but also in most editors, if you click on a brace, it'll show you a corresponding matching brace, which is really helpful now. Any questions on this if then stuff? Well, what if we want to um, do something and then otherwise do something else? That brings us to an else statement. And that's an addition to the if then statement here, uh, where we can say, 
if some Boolean expression, and if it's true, we'll do some statements. And we can say else, we'll do some other statements. Yeah. And again, we can do it without the braces, but we will require, and most companies will require you to put the braces around it like this uh, here. So this is how we'll set this up. Now, sometimes the braces might be on, not on separate lines. We might put this brace up here. I often do that and stuff so that it doesn't spread out so much. And here is the idea is that we are coming through, we check some condition and if that condition is true, we do the first statements. If it's false, we do the second statement. So if this condition is true, do this else. So this is like our else branch. So it's basically a branch in our program where we go either one way or the other way. And then we'll keep going on our program later on. Oh, so maybe you want to decide if you want to go to a, a, a soccer game or watch a movie uh, here and you're just going to flip a coin and the coins are going to be, uh, it, it is going to be heads or tails. So we might say, I'll uh, have a Boolean value and you'll just say, if it is heads, then we're going to go to the game. Otherwise, we're going to go to the movie. Or we might check something uh, here. So like, uh, when can you get a driver's license or not? So let's say you have to be 16 or more. So we have the age and we might actually ask the user to enter the age. Here, we're just assigning the age. And then if the age is greater than 16, greater than or equal to 16, then we're going to say you can have a driver's license in most states. Else, we say you don't. And so you, again, we have this the Boolean expression in parentheses here. And we have some usually some comparison greater than or equals or equivalent or something like that. And then we have the main statement and then the else statement here. So if it's if this is true, we'll do this. If this is false, we'll do this. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump into another textbook and just see on another textbook. Let's jump and do Think Java. So again, Think Java walks you through this, these relational operators. They're calling them relational operators rather than Boolean operators, but they're the same thing again, because their type is Boolean uh, here. So here's our relational operators, uh, same ones. Here's our if then statement, if and in parentheses, like x is greater than zero. And then we start with a brace and we do some statements, one or more statements, and we end with another brace here. And then it talks about if then else if, and then some expression that's uh, true or false. And again, we start a brace, uh, we end the brace and have an else, it's our brace, and then we have another brace here. Now notice here, they're putting the braces on the same line. And I like this, it just makes it a little tighter. So this brace is here, uh, right on the if. And again, same with this, the, the brace, the else, and the next brace are all in the same line. I li I'll tend to format it that way, uh, just to so it doesn't spread out to as many lines. Where like here, we had this if, and then the next line was a brace and the end brace. And again, when we do the else, it's similar uh, there where they, they spread it out some more. So different different options as far as formatting. Um, and I, I won't require you to do it one way or the other. I, what, again, you can do it without the braces, but we will not allow you to do that in this class. You always will have to have braces in it then. And one of the reasons we, it prevents a number of errors that we'll talk about uh, here. And um, it uh, most companies will require you to use braces uh, here. So here's the error that we see a lot. We say, if X is greater than zero, then, and again, the then is kind of implied in these statements. We say X is positive, and we say X is not zero uh, here. And we like these both done uh, here, but if we don't have a braces here, uh, then only the next statement is done, even though we indent it. And if you, there are some languages where the indenting is more, they don't have braces, they have indenting like Python. But here, um, the indenting doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that this is indented like this. 
only this statement. It, so here's the what it really is equivalent to. It only does this, and then this is a, a separate statement here. So talks about how or why we require braces some more. Also talks about chaining if then statements. So there's something called an else if. You can say if something is true and an else if, check another thing and then an else. And this the else if will then only apply if none of the previous ifs are, are chained together is true. So sometimes we'll see this if, else if, else if, and then finally one else. So it starts with an if, and then we do an else if, and we might do multiple else ifs, and the last one can be an, is just an else. So you can also put if then statements inside if then statements like this. Um, and we'll get more to those next week. Some of these more complicated things we'll get to next week. Yeah. Think Java talks about the same kind of introduces this block of statements with parentheses and statements in between uh, here. And then it talks about loops here, which we don't have, but then it talks about the if then statement, if some Boolean expression, and then a statement else, another statement uh, here. And doing it without the else. And the, and so this, we haven't done, we don't do the while loop for a while. This is just the if then statement. So I don't like this one as much because again, it, it kind of groups the if with the while one. So that's why I'm keeping that down at the bottom. We're ready to try an example of this. We're gonna do this driver's age one. Um, so I'm just gonna go on the NetBeans, run my NetBeans. I'm gonna do a new project. Just skip over this. It'll be an ant project, and I'm going to call it what unit three drivers license. And you can call it what you want, it's not that important. Uh, here, I'm going to clear out some of these comments. You don't have to clear out the comment. I just find that I like I only have one screen, and I want to try to get it to display on one screen for you. So for me. If I can clear out some of those comments, uh, and then I can zoom in a little bit more on this uh, as I'm working on it. So what do we want to do? We're going to ask the user to enter their age and read it into an integer. That's last week stuff. Do you remember how to do that last week? So how do I ask the user? Uh, so system dot out dot print line. Enter your age. Now we're gonna read in their input and I'm gonna need a scanner. And again, it's gonna want me to do an import. If I do this right, it should want the import. I have to add this import up here. Uh, here, so after my package, I put my import statements. So right now I just have one here. And again, I often, the scanner line is always the same. So if I often just take it from another program and copy and paste it in here, which is another way of doing it. Okay, now we have our scanner. We we'll can say, so what do we want to do? We want to read in an integer, enter their age. Uh, so we want to read an integer. So I need an integer variable int age equals input dot next. And I'm going to do next int to get an integer. So does that seem, so now I can run this. What is your age? I can say, let's say I'm just learning to drive, I'm, I'm 17 doesn't do anything. I enter, but stored 17 into their age variable. So now we want to do different things. So ask the user to enter the age, check if 
the age is more than 15, and then if so, we're on display, you can drive. So how do I do that? Uh, so I, I don't want to just say system dot out dot print line. You can drive because it will always print that out no matter what age they they run that. So if I run this, it'll just it'll always say if I say, oh, you know, say, okay, I'm 17 now, and it says you can drive. Oh, this is a really smart program. But I say, oh, I'm only four years old. It says you can drive. So I don't want it to say you can drive to a four-year-old uh, here. So I want to only do this line if something is, I don't always want to say you can drive. So I want to use my if-then statements. How does that work? If, and if is all lowercase, and then parentheses, and then some check. So what do I want to check? If the age is more than 15. So how do I write that? If age is more than, is greater than 15. So again, it, is it greater than or equals or greater? And I'd say it should be just great more. It's just, just if the age is more than 15. So I'm just going to write that. If age is more, is greater than 15. And then I'm going to put my parentheses uh, here. And then I'm going to run this. Enter your age. I can say 17. That works fine. But I'm still letting young kids drive. What is your age? I'm 12. It still says you can drive. So why uh, is this still saying that you can drive? I have my if-then statement here. Uh, so again, I need to put stuff inside the if-then statement, right? So this line, so oh, there's my start brace and my end brace. I want to put it, it, that's the everything inside here is only done if this is true. This is just continue on. So I'm going to put this, I have to put this inside my if then statement here. So if the age is less than 50 or is greater than 15, then print out you can drive. Okay, so now I can run this, enter your age. So I put down 17, you can drive. Now let's see. I enter age, I say I'm 12, and it doesn't say you can drive here. Yeah. It doesn't say anything. But at least it's getting better. So again, uh, check if their age is greater than 15. If so, display you can drive. I'll otherwise display you cannot drive. So I'm not doing that yet. Uh, so again, maybe I want to do that here. So otherwise, system.out. Print line, you cannot drive yet. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Now, is that going to work? If I run this, if I enter 17, it says you can drive, and then right away it says you cannot drive. It's a very confused computer program. Again, because this it does this if then if the age is greater than 15 it says you can drive but it always is going to print out you cannot drive even if it does this uh if i don't want it to do this i need to put in an else statement here i want to say if the age is greater fit for, and then i want to do a parenthesis and then i want to do else and then i want to put this statement inside the else you get my tabs uh, by indenting to look good. So if the age is greater than 15, parentheses, print out you can drive, parentheses, else, print out you cannot drive. So now it'll either do this or this. Kind of like we saw that. Let's see, I'm trying to remember where we saw that. Let's go here. Not they had oh so maybe um I think it was here this diagram here where we come to the kitchen if you uh is your age greater than fifteen and if so we go do this statement we can do that statement 
But if it's false, we go do this statement. And then we go uh, here. And so again, if we have a, a final statement like a system dot out dot print line, have a good day. It'll always say have a good day. So it'll either do this or this, uh, but it'll always say have a good day because that's outside. So here's the if then statement. That's this kind of thing. And then this is like that next statement there. How's this? Does this make sense? Questions on this? So let's try some other ones. Um, what if I want to check? So here, if they're more than 15, you can drive. Um, what Now we want to check if they are exactly 15. We want to say you can drive with a permit uh, here. So right now, uh, if they're exactly 15, we run this and they enter 15. It says you cannot drive. Uh, we want to say uh if you if you um are 15 then you can drive with the permit uh here um so i'm gonna add so i have this if uh how do i want to set this up and so sometimes this is confusing where i want to do multiple if then statements Maybe I want to try another if statement here. So if their age is greater than 15, that's it. Now I can say if their age is equal, and I want to do double equal equivalent to 15 uh, there. Then I'm going to say system dot, uh, dot print line. And what I want to say, um, I want to say you can drive with a permit. Oh, uh, here. And then my else is down here. Ah. Uh, And otherwise they, they'll say you cannot drive. So if I run this, and this is where we wanna make sure you're doing some good testing. You wanna test, cause I can just put in 15, it says you can drive with the permit, have a good day. So that seems to work. But I need to test out some other values. Um, what if I enter in 12, it says you cannot drive uh, yet, have a good day. That looks good. What if I enter 17? It says you cannot, you can drive, and then it says you cannot drive yet. So why does it say if I enter 17, why does it do this and this? Because this should be in an else. It shouldn't do this and this. It says you can drive, which is right, but then it also says you cannot drive. Our problem is that, let me put some spaces in here a little bit. We have separate if statements. This is one if statement, if the age is greater than 15, print out this. And this is an entirely separate if statement. If age is equal to 15, uh, do this else, put this. So this else only applies to this one if. If I wanna chain a bunch of ifs together, I need to do uh, an else if here. So I need to do else and then bring the if up here. Something like that. If the age is greater than 15, print you can drive. Else, if the age is 15, say you can uh, drive a perp. Else, you cannot drive yet. So I need this else if, then these else's, this whole thing is one big statement. And uh, this will happen once 
Otherwise, uh, we're basically going to do this. And if none of those, none of the ones above happen, we'll do this here. One thing you'll find with these things is there are lots of ways to set this up. Now, we're getting in some options. And so I'll often show you one way, but that's not, doesn't mean it's the only way uh, here. And you can make some arguments where some ways are better than other ways uh, here. So here's that's just one way of setting this up. I mean, I could do this whole thing without any else's also. I could just say, if the a, your age is greater than 15, print out, you can drive. And then we can do a separate if. If you are exactly 15, say, you can drive with a permit. And I can do one more if. If, so either the greater than 15, equal to 15, or else the age is less than 15. I can say you cannot drive. So I could do this. There's no else's, but I check all the conditions. If your age is greater than 15, do this. If the age is 15, do this. If the age is less than 15, do that. So I can do it there. I can also do it with this if, then, else. These both will do the same things. Uh, in fact, if I run this, enter some values, So let's say I enter 15. They all both say you can drive with the permit. Both of them will do the same thing. If I say, oh, I'm 17, they'll both say you can drive. And if I say I'm 12, they both say you cannot drive. So they do, those two do the, their equivalent in what they output. Uh, but one uses if then else's, one uses just if. Again, you can make arguments for why one is better than the other. I prefer this one, but uh, I could see arguments for why people would prefer this one too. So again, there's not just one way to set up this code for us to work with. Um, here's one more thing. Um, check if the if uh, if your 14 year old, if you're 14, you can then drive with a farm permit here. Now, Chris walks through these. So there's videos here, of Chris uh, walking through the same thing. So if you want another to review this again, you can watch these videos. You can also get this, this code here. Um, I give you a couple ways of getting it. So I'm just gonna walk through these. Um, one is I can download this zip file and this will basically uh, create a uh, the whole project on my computer. Uh, if I want to open it up in NetBeans, it creates a zip file. I have to unzip that file, so I have to find that file, and I have to say extract all and extract it. Then I have to go into NetBeans and open the project. So you, we've been doing new project, but I'm going to open project. I have to go find that. It's in my downloads folder. So if I go to this PC, T. Gibbons, um, let's see. Just trying to figure out. Oh, yeah. Ah. Uh, if I go to my folder and find downloads, it'll be in there your driver's age, I can open that up. And that'll open this up and inside this source packages uh, here inside this folder will be this driver's age. And I can use that and run that. So again, that's one way of doing things. You can also duplicate that all with uh, GitHub here. Um, if I close all the projects and get back here, uh, now I can go to, oh, what does it say? It is using something called Git. We really won't talk too much about Git, uh, but you can use it. So under NetBeans, I can go team, Git, clone, project, and I want a repository. So I'm gonna grab this repository here, paste that in here, uh, and I'm gonna say next. 
It's going to get that repository. I can say next uh, and finish. And it'll open up the project. So here's the driver's age project here. The same code. So again, one way I went to open project and opened it up. And one way I did the Git. Both of those seem like an awful lot of work to me just to see code. So I'll generally just have a link directly to the code. You can just click on that link and it'll show the code here uh, for this. It shows it at GitHub. And again, you can always copy and paste that code in uh, to your program or work with the program in different ways. So you can just look at this and I can create a new project and paste this code in. Uh, so again, I can uh, just look at the code there or if I wanted to bring it in and try to change it, I can just do my new project. Uh, I can just take this code, like maybe I'll just take all the code inside this uh, uh, main and paste it in here. <clears throat> I have to watch my braces that I don't get the braces kind of mixed up. And I might have to work on my imports, but then I can have all my code here. So again, there'll be some different ways for you to bring in the code or view the code with these problems uh, here. Again, uh, this is just one way of doing it. We're saying if the age is greater than 15, print out you can drive. If the age is 15, we say you can drive the permit. If the age is 14, you can drive up a farm permit. Otherwise, if you're less than 14, we say you cannot drive yet. So those are our examples here. Let's look at another example. Well, I'll just warn you in case you were thinking these were actually the rules for Minnesota. These are not the rules for Minnesota uh, here. Currently, uh, these are the rules for Minnesota. Uh, you can get a learning permit if you're 15 or hot older uh, there. Uh, once you've uh, got your learning permit and completed the behind the wheel instruction, you can get a provisional license until you're 18. And then once you're 18 and have a provisional, provisional license, you can get a full license. So that's a little more complicated than we want to do and has more input. So we're going to actually do that, the actual rules uh, in unit four, as an example, just so you know. So. Let's do this letter grade. So one of the common things we have is like, you'll get a grade like on an exam, a test grade, and you'll get, 85 out of 100. And then what does that translate as far as a letter grade? And different uh, classes, different professors have different scales, but this is a common scale. Uh, 90 to 100 is A, 80 uh, to 90 is B, et cetera. Uh, here. So we're going to set up a program that does this uh, here. So again, I'm going to, I'm going to close some of these. Uh, so I'm just going to ask, go oh, I'm going to create a new project. Uh, So we're going to ask the user to enter their test score, and then we're going to display a letter grade. So again, this enter a test score, this is uh, very much what we did last week, system.out.printline. Uh, what score did you get on the exam? We're going to at prompt them for some input, and then we're going to read that input in. So again, I need a scanner. 
And again, I am going to start shortcutting this and just grab the scanner and paste that in here. And when I paste it in there, it also does the import at the same time. So here's my scanner. Oops, I pasted it right over there. Okay. There's my scanner. And then once I have my input scanner, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to read in a score. Now, what should the score be? What type of variable should the score be? Should it be a a string, an integer, or a double? Double? Why do you say double instead of integer? I like double. I think it makes sense. Because it can you get a, a, you might not get a full, you might get like, 85 point, you know, you might get partial credit on a, a question, right? So it might be a, a decimal. So I'm going to do a double score equals, and I'm going to do input dot next double. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we read that in. Um, now I'm going to do some checks in here. I mean, there's these errors. Uh, they're confusing me right away. I'm going to just do these. So I'm going to check if there if the score is between 90 and 100 uh, for this. How would I do that? I could say if the score is greater than 90, Then I'm going to say, uh, so I'm just going to say if the score is greater than 90, because again, if they have more than 90 points uh, on here, they'll they'll get an A. So then I'm going to go system dot out dot print line. You are your grade is an A. So now I can run this. And again, I like to do this and keep kind of running it, see how I'm doing uh, as I go. So I'm gonna run this, even though it's not complete, I'm just got, but I got a little bit in here enough, maybe I can test it out. So what is your score on the exam? I'm gonna say, I got a 95. And it says you got an A. So if I write in this again and I say I got an 85, it doesn't say anything. Because again, we're only doing this if the score is greater than 90, we're printing this out. We don't have an else. Uh, otherwise, we're not doing anything here. So I'm going to add another one here. So let's do this one. If the score is greater than 80, they get a B. So I'm going to say if score is greater than 80, then I'm going to say, I'm just going to copy this line down here and say your grade is a B. So if their score is more than 90, they get an A. If their score is greater than 80, they get a B. How does that sound? Does that look like that's going to be working? So that's not going to do quite what we want. Uh, here, let's do some tests. So let's say I got a 95. It says your score is an A, and that says your grade is an A, and that says the grade is a B here. Why does it say both? Uh, well, these are separate if-thens. If the score is greater than 90, you get an A. Your grade is an A. And this is a separate if, if the score is greater than 80. and 95 is greater than 80, that's true. The score is greater than 80, then your grade is a B. So it does both of these stuff, two options uh, for this. Um, so we don't want it to do both. So how do I check this? So we can look at a couple options here. Um, 
we'll learn that we can check not just if the score is greater than 80, we can also learn later on. And again, we're, I'm just going to show you this, not really explain it. We can also say, and the score is less than 90 uh, here. So I can say, and that's what this is saying, basically, uh, greater than 80 and less than, uh, and through 89. Uh, or, you know, so if the score is greater than 80 and the score is less than 90 uh, here, uh, and I have to put this and percent, but I'm going to try next week. We'll learn more about that. I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, so I'm going to try to do it without that complicated stuff. And I'm going to do it with an else. So can I put in an else here? So because either they have an A or they have a B, else they have a B. So I'm going to say else and then bring this if up here. So if the score is greater than 90, they get an A. Else, if the score is greater than 80, they get a B for this. So now I run this. What score? I got a 95. I just get an A. That's good. I run this. I got an 85. I get a B. That's good. Run this. I got a 75. Doesn't say anything yet because I haven't done below the, the, a C or something like that yet. But I have the basics here. Who's looking better? See anything wrong with this? As a teacher, I'll tell you, there's something wrong with this uh, because sometimes a student will get a certain score and they don't get the grade they think they should and they'll come to your office and explain that to you very persuasively uh, here. So what score would you get and not, could you get and not get the right grade for this? What happens if my score is 90? What grade? I get a I get a B. Am I supposed to get a B if I get 90 out of 100? No. 90 or more should be A. So how do I change this so that it's not just the score is greater than 90? Uh, equals. Yeah, I can do greater than or equals there. Yeah. Now you might think, oh, what if you put like an 89, if it's greater than 89 uh, here, but if they're 89 and a half, that's not 90, that's a B uh, there. So I can't do, well, I'll avoid 89.9, you know, there are ways. So it would be, it's better to say greater than or equal to 90 uh, here. And I'm gonna put some spaces here so we can read that a little better. And same with this 80, if they get, if their score is greater than or equal to 80, then they get a B. So now we run this, and if we say my score was 90, it, I get an A uh, here. But again, if my score is 89 and a half, I get a B, which is good. So now I'm doing this right. So now how do I do the rest of this uh, setup? So I'm going to do another, I'm going to just replicate this kind of pattern of else ifs uh, here. I'm going to do this else if again and again. Where are my form? So if the score is greater than 70, greater than or equal to 70, they get a C. If the score is greater than or equal to 60, I get a D. And then I'm just going to say here, else, if they don't get an A, B, C, or D, they're going to get an uh, uh, F, I'm just going to say. Uh, they get an F. So now I've handled all of these checks uh, here. With the whole bunch. So if the score is greater than 90, we get an A, we put out A. Else, if the score is greater than or equal to 80, we say B. Else, if the score is greater than or equal to 70, we say C. Else, if the score is greater than 60, we say D. Otherwise, if none of those are true, and again, these are all chained together, so this else applies to this whole chain, we say you have an F. 
Now, if we run this, we can enter any value. So we can say, I got a 67 and I'll say you got a D. Uh, I can say, I got a 97 and I'll say you got an A. How's that look? And again, that's not the only way to do it, but that's one way of doing it. So let's do this stuff. Now, what if they mistaken that the, there's supposed to only be 100 points on the exam? What if they type in something really big uh, here? We want to display that there was an error uh, of, in this. So, how do we do that? Um, so um, we can, what we want to do here is add another if, and where should we put that uh, here? Um, can we put it at the bottom? Uh, I mean, this is the top, but why, I don't, can I just add another if then statement kind of here? Uh, Another else if, else if the score is greater than 100. We're going to say something like air. The score must be 100 or less. So will that work uh, if I just put that score greater than 100 there? I run this, what score did they get on the exam? I got, you got a 76, that says you got a C. Ah, uh, that looks good. Ah, uh, and if I say you got 120, so you got an A. So this doesn't happen. Why doesn't this happen if I put in 120? Because I have this here, uh, but it never got to, it, it didn't do this. So again, let's look at our, if the score is greater than 90, we print out you got an A. And if they put in 120, that is greater than 90. So this will, this will be true. The score will be greater than 90 and it'll say you got an A. And then the else is kicking and then we skip, since the else is kicking, we skip overall. We only do the else parts if this is false and that was true. So then we don't ever check this. So we've got to check this in a certain order here. Uh, in the same way that we have to set this up in this order. If this were the other way where we were checking, if we were checking for greater than 60 first uh, and, said, and said that, um, this would not work. We are checking the most, the uh, highest scores first and kind of setting those. So this, has to actually be up at the top for this to work. And then I need an else if here. So I need to check if the score is greater than 100 first and then uh, 90. So now if I run this and then they enter their score of 120, it'll say air. And if I enter a 97, it'll work out correctly. So we do have to sometimes watch when we chain the if thens together that uh, they, they have kind of implications. So like here, when we say, if the score is greater than 80, well, that, that doesn't mean that everyone who scores greater than 80 gets a B. It means that if you didn't get an A, L, then if your score is greater than 80, then you could get a B. But we need that after this 
check for an A first. Uh, check for an A and then check for a B. So same here when we want to check if, uh, so how do I check if uh, we want to say here if it's less, like they enter a negative number uh, here. So again, what I want, right now I'm just saying else you get an F. I want to say um, another else, else uh, if, and, and again, Maybe, uh, well, let's just try another if here. If the score is less than zero, then I'm going to print out uh, error. Score must be positive. So if the score is less than zero, I want to print. So maybe I could try that uh, here. So I could say negative 34. And it does say an error, but it also says I got an F because this else is in here. So I, want, I don't have this all chained together correctly. But I want to say else. I want to do this all with a chain of if then else is. So I want to work on another if, if the score is greater than or equal to zero, then you get a F and then else if the score, uh, if, yeah, if they didn't get an F, if, it, if the score isn't greater than, if it's at zero or more, then we're going to say an error. And we can run that. So if I say I got a minus 34, it'll just say error. Where if I say that's a just a positive 34, it'll just should just say I got an F. Oh, so um this code's also here. Uh, I actually show the code in a couple different formats here. This is the one we kind of just looked at. Oh, here's a version that just uses if statements. We kind of talked about first where we don't use else's, but in order to do if statements, we need these ands. We need to say if the score is greater than 80 and the score is less than 89 or something like that uh, here. So, and here I'm actually doing integer, it looks like, uh, for this. Um, here's a version with the else's, if, else, if, else, if. So this is what we ended up doing. Now, when Chris walks it through, um, rather than printing out this each time, your grade is A, your grade is B, grade is C, the last version just has a grade variable here, a string grade, and we'll set that grade to A that string to be whatever. And at the end, we just print out your grade is in that grade variable uh, here. So it it just uh, stores it in different formats. Uh, it's just a different way of doing it. Again, like we've seen, there's lots of ways uh, or multiple ways of doing it. And one isn't necessarily the be better than the other. And again, this Chris will walk through here again if you want more of a review of this. I know like some of you have probably seen if then before somewhere else. Uh, maybe you've done block programming in high school. Maybe you did are doing have done block programming in the CS principles class. And this is all seeming very familiar if you're just writing it out rather than doing blocks or whatever. So uh, if that's fine, you don't have, but if, if a lot of this is new, you might want to read the text some more and watch some of these videos as another reminder of this uh, stuff. Um, I'm not going to do too much with this math example. I'm just going to, uh, here's, we present a menu. Can we relate to all we did math magic last week? Oh, uh, you can choose to, you can ask the user to enter a number. We can add 100 to the number, subtract 50 from the number, multiply that number by two, or divide that number by three, or do nothing. And here's, I'm just going to bring up this code for this.
So again, um, we print out, I like to do some mathematical algebra. What number do you want to start with? We declare a scanner and we read in our number and it's an integer and we just read into a variable called number uh, here. And then we print out this little menu. Uh, do you want to add 100, subtract 50, multiply by two, divide by three, or quit? Uh, here we read in their choice. And then if their choice equals one, we're going to add one to the number, I mean 100 to the number and print out that number. And if the choice is two, we're doing this. Now, one thing's interesting, rather than say saying choice equals uh, one here, we're uh, coding in some constants. We haven't talked too much about constants, but when you declare variables, you can declare a variable int, give it some name. If you're never gonna change that variable, if it's gonna be fixed, we call that a constant. You can tell the computer to not allow it, that to ever be changed. And so we put the word final in front of it. And then we do this, we often then write it in uppercase, just kind of mark it as this is this case. So we declare these variables here. And then we're always checking if the user's choice is equal to one of these constants here. Now, later on, we'll revisit this when we get into loops and I'll come back, we'll come back and talk about it. Uh, but again, if you wanna just look through this, uh, Chris has a video that walks through this, so. Um, so Wednesday, we're going to uh, start looking maybe at, uh, at this uh, learning exercise with ASCII art uh, here. We're going to have you create little art like th given a picture, we're going to have you create ASCII art of it like this uh, here. So we're going to give you a, a code to start with. And work. So we'll do this in class on Wednesday uh, for this. And again, there's a video that walks you through this already posted here. So that'll be Wednesday's stuff. Sound good? All right. Oh. Let's stop this. Uh...